hi guys welcome back to my channel i hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where i have the pretty grunge collection from hood hood where I have the pretty grunge collection from Huda Beauty. I have the eyeshadow palette and the blush gloss. Where we're going to be trying them out and I'm going to be sharing all of my first impressions on these new products with you, as well as comparing the eyeshadow palette with the empowered palette. I've seen a lot of people wondering if you need both, if this is different. So let's find out together, shall we? Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first up, let's take a look at this eyeshadow palette. Isn't that so satisfying? This packaging, I just love it. It's so funky. I think it's super cool and different. Definitely stands out in my collection. And here we have those shadows. Oof, this excites me. I feel like it's it's different enough that I'm excited to use it and excited to pick it up even with my big old collection but it still looks super wearable to me I think if you're a bit intimidated by Natasha Denona's Midi Zenon this feels a little bit more easygoing I feel like for me and the way I do makeup the most frequently this feels more usable and wearable and less intimidating but still fun and different and like cooler toned than your average palette so this palette will set you back 62 pounds and 69 dollars there's a price increase right i'm sure the price of these palettes used to start with a five. Is that just me? I think we've gone up slightly in price. The palettes are made in Italy. They have a stand up by itself, solid feeling mirror and everything. I really like the packaging. I'm excited to use this. As far as I can tell, this palette is permanent because the blush is listed as limited edition, whereas the palette isn't. So I think just the blush gloss is limited. The eyeshadow palette seems to be permanent. So let's take a look at this blush gloss. Super cool sort of see-through packaging there. I don't know how well it's gonna show up on camera, but it looks very cool in person. So this is available in one shade described as punk pink, very cute. And it's a pH adapting blush. So it will look different depending on your skin's pH level. This is limited edition and will set you back 28 pounds or 39 dollars it also says that this can be used on the lips it's apparently a lightweight non-sticky creamy formula that blends into the skin for a natural finish and coats your lips with a fine silky film for long lasting results this doesn't have a mirror which i'm mm, especially because in the description it says you know perfect for taking with you and doing touch-ups on the go so i feel like a mirror would really have been perfect in here i do see what they're going for with like the c through packaging with those sort of paint splashes on there but I personally would have loved a mirror in there especially as it's designed to be like on the go but let's dive into some swatches so these are 18 pan palettes so I don't think I'm going to fit all of the shades down my arm like I normally would so I'm going to swatch them in groups on the back of my hand so I think that would just be easier to see them all so here we have that top row oof that's pretty. These mattes are feeling delightful, I'll say that. So there's the top row. Gorgeous. This shade, stunning. Then we have the middle row. Oof, yes please. Oh, that shade as well, stunning. So there's that middle row absolutely glorious also these shadows are swatching beautifully the mattes feel very soft i'm excited and then we have the bottom row oh my gosh this shade by the way which is rebel oh my gosh it's stunning but i swirled my finger in there and it really was quite crumbly so just be careful with that one be a little more gentle than i was don't just swirl your finger in there or you will beat that shadow up a little bit last two shades and this final shade here is a gloss so it's like a sort of cream 
gloss shadow designed to be like used as like a base to kind of make colors pop or you could use it as liner however you like most likely i won't use it at all because i'm a massive wimp and you know me i like my wearable soft glam boring looks so <laughs> that will probably be the shadow i don't use but those swatches got me excited okay very very pretty lots of variation and options in there i think it's a very nice versatile palette offering you an abundance of different looks okay so before we move on to the demo i just wanted to show you empowered next to pretty grunge so this is empowered on this side pretty grunge in the black packaging i actually don't think they're as similar as people are thinking empowered overall runs much warmer than pretty grunge when you see them like this side by side i don't think they're similar at all there may be a couple of shades that kind of in the ballpark but overall the color story is quite different oh my gosh this feels so different to what i was expecting this is so strange it literally feels like material like it doesn't feel like makeup it feels like um like swatching like a piece of card or something it, f it doesn't feel wet or sticky and yeah it just feels very like firm it feels like i'm not getting anything off like a sort of i don't even know how to describe that a very sort of solid cream texture and this is really interesting because when i first touched it was clear and now my finger you can see has turned quite pink so it's obviously that sort of adapting color as it's warming up to my skin this is going to be very interesting and terrifying at the same time as to how this application is going to go i have no idea i'm going to let that sit on my skin for a little while and see what it does i mean it's very interesting i'll give it that there's a hair on my face and it's driving me nuts oh yeah you can see it's already starting to take on this sort of pinky almost a bit corally color as it went on completely clear i'm so excited to try it but I'm also terrified because it's really necessary to apply that with your fingers to get it to warm up to adjust to your pH. But you know how I feel about that. <laughs> Not good. But you know, it's for science. Okay, so let's dive into the eyeshadow palette. I could go in so many different directions. I'm just really excited to use it all. I wanted to do like four or five looks, but I just haven't got time today, unfortunately. So I'm going to do two and we'll see where we end up. I'm going to start off with the shade Brave. And this is my refer. 01 max one of the new max brushes by the way refa have started their black friday sale so if you are looking into refa brushes or you need more then now is the time they're like the most reduced ever so that's awesome i love this brush this is i think my favorite from the max line this shade is very nice it's blending out beautifully it can be really built up but it can also really be diffused and used lightly i think this palette is going to be so great if you were kind of interested in natasha denona's xenon palette but it was a little scary i get it i'm terrified too okay i'm afraid of it but if you want to kind of experiment in that sort of cooler family greys then you've got some in here but you've also got a lot of more comfort zony shades you know to mix in and go back to because ultimately if you're not going to use those shades that's going to be such a waste of money whereas in here if you, if you find out it's not for you or it's too much or it's too intimidating for like every day you can just stick to the more wearable softer glam shades and by the way obviously wearable is completely subjective when i say wearable every day daytime i mean like for me personally not for you everybody is completely different what you like to do that's just like for me i mean so next i'm going to go into fearless refer 33 oh i like these sort of dustier smoky purple shades i think they're so sexy and flattering as well i really like these kind of smokier purples really easy to wear i have done my face makeup first today so this is gonna be a little messier around the edges than usual because as you guys know i'm no professional i'm a mess maker 
and things are always a little messy around here, but that's okay. That's what I'm here for, to show you if it's idiot proof. Because I'm an idiot. Oh, when it comes to shimmers, there's just so many options. I'm spoiled for choice. I do really like that these shadows are going on the eye as they look in the pan. I feel like we've gone through a trend, particularly in Natasha Denona, where what it looks like in the pan is not necessarily how it looks on the eye. And for like an amateur like myself, that's tricky, okay? Sometimes things are not what you wanted them to work out like, but this is like, it's going on how I expected it to, based on how the shadows look. So I think next I'm gonna use Haphazard Refa 02 Max. This is the brush I was telling you guys in my monthly roundup. That is such a great like lid crease, cut crease, lid packing brush. It's a really nice size. Okay, that is a lot darker than I was expecting it to be, but Again, it's blending out so nicely that my sort of mistakes are being quite easily fixed. I can just blend it a little and then it works. But this is turning out pretty smoky. I've got school run and then swimming lessons later. So, you know, <laughs> it's the usual embarrassing day for me going about with two completely different eyes and who knows what's gonna happen on the cheeks. You know, everybody's very used to it at this point. They just assume I got dressed in the dark, I think. I did actually have that comment once on my video because I filmed after I'd done an eyeshadow palette test and someone said that I must have like done my makeup in the dark because my eyes are completely different. <laughs> it's a fair assumption. Okay, now I can't withhold it any longer. I have to go into this shade here. This is the one that I said was a bit crumblier. Rebel, it's quite loose and sort of squishy. <laughs> I don't know if that's an accurate description, but you can sort of press it with your brush and it's like moving about. So you wanna be careful. In fact, this will be a finger application, I think. I'm gonna to touch my finger, yeah. So finger is the way to go. I think with my brush, I'm just kind of moving it around and I'm not really picking much up. <laughs> Excuse a you. I beg your pardon. I mean, it's worth it, isn't it? This is the thing, this type of shadow, it's going to be messy. I mean, it's not actually as messy as I would have thought, to be honest. I'm gotting, I'm gotting, I'm gotting a few specks of fallout there, but, you see here, I mean more than a few, it's it's a fair number. <laughs> but it's definitely not as many as I would have thought because that is really loose, almost like a cream sort of hybrid type of shade. But I got it on with a finger, I think a brush would have been a mistake. I think it would have just been all over my face. So I'm glad I held back. I'm just gonna go in with the shade Fearless and my 01 Max again and blend the edges of these shadows together. That is so flipping pretty, isn't it? That shade is a wow shade. Okay, so for inner corner, I'm gonna go in with Maverick and my Refa 02 Original. Neither Mini nor Max, it's just 02. And give this a little bit of an inner corner finesse. Oh, perfect, pretty little inner corner pop there. We're loving that. And then Refa 26 and that first shade I used Brave on the lower lash line. Okay, and this is look one. She's very pretty. This is a mess, I realise. If I had done my eye makeup first, I would have just wiped that with a wipe or just used my concealer to clean that area up. So just try to imagine that's not there. But... <sighs> little speck of glitter on the nose. Super pretty, all the shadows worked gloriously. This little number down here, I think is worth the extra little finessing of the application because with a finger, it's stunning and really not that much fallout given how loose that shadow feels. That's a really great start with this palette for me. Super pretty, very wearable. Like this is more for sure an evening like going out look for me. I wanted to use, you know, a good few of the shadows, which I did. Mattes and everything blending gloriously. Shimmers are giving me as much drama as I would love. So yeah, good start. Okay, so on this side, I'm going to do a much more, I, I think I said I was going to do two wearable looks and that's not happened. That's not what how this turned out. 
but this side, I promise you, we're gonna do something more wearable, okay? Let's call this a daytime and a nighttime. So we're gonna start off with Rise Up, which looks like a very nice transition shade. And we're using Rafa 01 Max again. Yeah, this is a perfect transition shade for me. And actually would be like a perfect one and done for a no makeup makeup day. Ideal, I love having a shadow like that in a palette because I feel like we forget that not everyone has 46 eyeshadow palettes. And if you just want one, heaven forbid, or you know two or three, then you want them to do as many jobs as possible. And so if it can do this, and that's a look, ideal. You know, you're gonna use it a lot. You're gonna get a lot of use out of this palette. It's very usable, user-friendly. So now I'm gonna use my 33 and this Hope shade down there. And I know what you're thinking. Charlotte, <laughs> you're going unwearable again, but we're going to use this very lightly in the crease. And this brush 33 is perfect for my hooded eye angels. Nice and precise to get inside that little hooderoo. I know people think I don't have hooded eyes, but it's because whenever I'm applying eyeshadow, I raise my eyebrows so that I can see what I'm doing. But you can see if I look straightforward and relax my eyebrows. There's a bit of a hood. They're not fully hooded, I hear you. You could have more hooded eyes, but I have a hood and therefore I have hooded eyes, you know. It is what it is. Again, you could do an all matte look. You could go in with a bit of heroin all over the lid and this is gonna be a very, you know, office friendly librarian teacher appropriate <laughs> look. I don't know if that's just me. So I'm going to go in with this stand up shade. I think this is the most sort of daytimey shimmer in here. Oh, she's pretty. Definitely a bit of a toned down shimmer compared to what we have going on over here. Bit smoother. That was my Rafa 21, by the way. I think I forgot to tell you. And then I'm gonna use my O2 and this lighter matte in the corner. I'm a big fan of using a mat in the corner, you know. And brow arch there. Rafa 26 and rise up on the lower lash line. And there we have the second look. Obviously completely different looks between one and two. You could say evening, daytime, office, errands, soft glam, kapow, New Year's Eve, if you want. Literally no fallout on this side I don't that I can see or notice during that, and literally only a couple of specks on this side. Fallout's not a huge deal breaker for me, but I know it is for some people. Both of these looks came out super pretty. All of the shadows worked beautifully. All of the shadows worked beautifully. Matte's soft, buildable, blendable, very, very nice. Shimmers, we've got a really nice variation in there, kind of something for everybody. Some really impactful ones and some softer, more reserved shimmers. So there's a really nice array of options in here. You could do 10, 15 looks, different looks in here. I think it's very, very versatile. And yeah, I think we use quite a lot. Maybe I avoided like a couple of the scarier ones, but we've used quite a lot of those shadows and no problems. So let's whack on some mascara and show you the finished look. Okay, so quick coat of mascara just to kind of show you the eyeshadow looks with mascara. I'm really pleased with these. Okay, so now for the moment of terror, because I am terrified of using this. You know that I'm not a cream girl, I'm not a liquid or cream product connoisseur, okay? I'm terrified of most creams and liquids, and this one is especially terrifying because it is quite different to the textures I'm used to, and also it says that you've got to apply it with your fingers or that you should apply it with your fingers to warm the product up and get it to work with your pH as it's designed to do. And that is just ne like, 
I don't like touching things. I don't like applying stuff with my fingers. If I can absolutely help it whatsoever, I won't. But I feel like I have to with this, but I'm, it's just, it's terrifying. I feel very nervous, but we're gonna do it for science. So I'm gonna do a two fingered salute. <laughs> So I'm gonna do a swirl on my, in what is this, index and middle finger. <laughs> Correct, you see how terrified I am? I'd forgotten words. And I'm gonna tap this on, you can see a little bit of fallout there. There is nothing on my cheeks, by the way, um, other than some, that's just making it worse, but okay. There's nothing on my cheeks, by the way, other than some cream contour. So there's no powder there. I've just got foundation and cream contour. There's only powder underneath my eyes, so, nothing that should mess this up and I'm gonna start tapping in. I'm fully expecting this to pick up my foundation, but I'm just gonna do what I'm told. And then on this side, we'll try it how I would apply my cream products as a cream wimp would. I have to say this is going better than I thought. It does feel a bit sticky, like as I'm touching it onto my cheek, it's definitely feeling a bit sticky, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's going badly. I don't think it's picking up my foundation. I want to look in here. Where's the mirror? There should be a mirror. That's my one complaint so far. Mm, maybe it's, mm. I think it's slightly disturbed my foundation underneath on this side. I did do a lot of sort of touching and blending and it's kind of looking a little uneven there it does have a very nice dewy finish i will also say it's staining my fingers quite badly so that's another reason why i don't like to apply things with my hands because that is not coming off i'm trying to rub it on my baby wipe that i have here and it's it is not coming off in fact it seems to be like getting darker and darker <laughs> God. okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do what i would usually do this is like the as recommended side, okay? Which is with the fingers. I think we can kind of sort this out a little bit. No, I think I'm making it worse, but okay. We're gonna use my BK Beauty brush. This is the 109. And this is like my go-to with cream products. I just feel like for a makeup idiot, especially a cream idiot, who struggles to like apply creams without causing problems, picking product up, etc. this is, your best friend this brush it literally does it for you and it's so gentle that it's it's definitely your best bet if you're heavy-handed like i am and you're afraid of creams this has been like a game changer it's actually allowed me to enjoy some cream and liquid products because it applies them so nicely and i'm still getting the color using this brush so Again, I went to look in the mirror that's not there. Yeah, this would be my recommendation. It went far better on this side and it's not like I'm not getting the color. The color is still coming through, you know, without using my fingers because it is, you know, touching my skin and warming up on the cheek. And actually I think the color has kind of developed better on this side, more evenly and everything. So yeah, my recommendation is if you're afraid of this product like me and you're not really a cream expert, just stick to the method that works for you, whatever that is. Because for me, this is the method that works for me. And I think this side looks way better. This side, I definitely think has picked up foundation a little and it's just looking a little less even because of that. But I think this side looks beautiful. I have no highlighter on. You can see that really dewy finish i'm wearing the hourglass foundation which is quite a matte foundation so all of this glow is coming from this blush gloss it's still i mean it's interesting because it did say in the description that it was non-sticky but it definitely feels sticky to me so i think this side turned out really pretty i think the color is gorgeous this side was a little more problematic using my fingers that's probably a user error because I'm just not good with these products, but this side I'm really happy with. Let's try it on the lips as well. Mmm. That's pretty. And as you can tell from like this finger, <laughs> it is definitely going to be like give a bit of a stain. So I think that will last really nicely on the lips and it feels very comfortable. It doesn't feel strange. It doesn't feel like I've got a blush on my lips, which can sometimes, you know, feel really heavy. I 
very pretty let me do another coat of mascara and see whether the blush is like continuing to change or if this is the finished color let's hope i don't come back looking like a clown okay guys so we're back i've just done a quick second coat of mascara and i can't really see the blush gloss changing i think this is kind of like the finished color which i think is so pretty very like i've just run around and you know got a very natural glow to my cheeks very like your cheeks but better very pretty very natural it's really flattering i love the color that it's taken on it's kind of got that sort of corally tone to it that i really love and i think these eye looks I'm really, really pleased with. I think they're glorious. I'm really happy with both looks. And this side, I will say, I know I thought it had slightly picked up my foundation here. I think it might have done. It's not bad, it was easily fixed, but I think this side, it just went so much better and it was so much less scary. And I have definitely stained my fingers from the blush gloss. So for me, I would highly recommend, if you don't already have the 109 BK Beauty, it's a lifesaver for cream products. And that's how I would apply this. I think it looks very pretty. I love the dewy glow to the finish. And I think it looks lovely on my lips. Oh my gosh, no transfer either. That's really nice. You could just, you know, use this as a stain. You could go over this now with a lip oil. I wish I had one handy, but I don't. And that's gonna give you a lovely glossy stain. So I think that's a really nice, quite versatile product as well. <gasps> this has gone well. I wasn't necessarily expecting it, you know especially with the blush gloss, I've been terrified to use it. Okay, so my first impressions of this palette from, I was gonna say Pat McGrath for some reason, am I drunk? My first impressions on this Pretty Grunge palette from Huda Beauty, I think it's gorgeous. I really like the packaging, I think it's pretty and it's fun, and it's just so versatile. You can see how different these two looks are. You can get daytime, one and done, very no makeup makeup, or you can go full phenom glam. And I don't, I didn't even use like the most dramatic shades in here. And we've got a super glam party look out of it, but it's still one that is like within my comfort zone and that is very wearable for me if I was going out in the evening. I think there's so many options in here. There's lots of lovely formulas, but everything worked really beautifully. I won't really use this gloss shade grunge, but lots of people will. And that will give you that option if you want something really smoky and really intense and really grungy, then you could use that as a base all over the lid and it's gonna intensify everything thing stunningly that's just not like my cup of tea for makeup i'm too terrified and wimpy but that's going to satisfy you if you want to go all all out and i do like using these shades for like liner so i i may get some use out of them but i like that there's only one in here i love that there are a variety of like levels of shimmer as well so you can go for something softer or something really really impactful when it comes to the shimmers there's such a nice variety of mattes there's a nice ratio of shimmer to mattes i think this is without question my favorite huda beauty palette ever i've skipped a couple of huda beauty eyeshadow palettes i just think because there wasn't anything i needed or that was particularly wowing or speaking to me but this one really did i think it's something different to a lot of the palettes i have but still very wearable and not super intimidating there's a lot of shades in here i can use every day and i think that's great to see something a bit different but not so different that you won't use it you know this blush gloss was not something I thought I would like. I thought this was going to be a full on disaster. And I know that we shouldn't have like preconceived as like a content creator, you should try to keep an open mind, which I did try because I bought it. And if it was just for my own purposes, I wouldn't have, I would not have bought this. But I definitely went into this video <laughs> waiting for it to be a massive fail and expecting it to be a game of two halves with this collection that I would probably like the eyeshadow palette and I would hate this and it would be a disaster and a mess. And that's just not how it went at all. I, As I said, I do wish it had a mirror. It's kind of instinctual for me to keep wanting to look in this compact and there isn't one and that's really annoying me. But 
by itself I definitely worked out the way to make it work for me and I think with the brush it's beautiful and I could also see me using this on my lips particularly if I wanted a stain and with a lip oil over the top I think it would be so pretty and a nice sort of pull together look where everything works nicely together but yeah I think it works 100% better for me with a brush I don't like that it stained my fingers and I it feels very very strange it's a very different product for me but I'm super happy with the end result and I think it's really pretty. So that was a pleasant surprise. I definitely had less issues than I think I was expecting to. <laughs> so that's delightful. I mean, you can see on the back of my hand, I have tried to remove this with a baby wipe and it's still very much there. So it is gonna be very long wearing, which is unusual for cream products. So there you have it, a very positive experience with this collection. I'm really enjoying it. I will, of course, keep playing with the eyeshadow palette and use it for more looks that I will share with you guys on Instagram and also I will let you know in my November roundup how I'm continuing to like or otherwise these products as I use them more over the coming weeks. Please let me know if you picked up any of these products and how you're getting along with them and what your thoughts are in the comment section down below but I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I'd love to see you in the next one otherwise take care for now bye 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 bye